Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have added Ad Astra, which is a visual mod that will hopefully help with the artifacting that I saw in the previous videos. We now see some nice cloud shadows here, so maybe that will help out. Uh, it was recommended by Mikko in the comments and it is far more intense than what we had before. So it does take more RAM and I'd say that if you're trying to put this install together now, I don't know if 32 gigabytes of RAM would work. It's currently taking 22 gigabytes all on its own, KSP is. So, uh, well, but that's partly because I chose the 43K cloud textures for Ad Astra. So Ad Astra works with JNSQ and hopefully it'll work with Parallax, but we'll really only find out when we get into flight mode. Of course, in the KSC scene, we can't be sure, but uh, I've got it all working as far as I could tell. It uses textures from uh, Astronomer's Visual Pack as a pretty intense sk uh, skybox. So I'm hoping that's not so intense when we actually get into flight, but you can see the effects here. So anyway, that is the visual update. I didn't get any recommendations for the static scenery around the KSC yet. So uh, hopefully there'll be something about that. But let's take a look at our contracts. And we have an Explore the Moon contract now, but it requires us to land on the moon, which we haven't done. So I guess we are going to try to land on the moon. And then it wants us to return too. Uh, we could get one part done first though. Uh, so yeah, which, and this is just return from orbit of the moon. So that's not necessarily the thing that lands on the moon returning. We'll see. There's some part testing, but I don't want to do those. There's a separate position satellite in equatorial orbit of the moon, which would be nice. But I think we should do the science from the surface of the moon if we're going to do the landing contract. So I'll pick that up as a priority. It doesn't necessarily pay more than this, though. And we could sure use... But this one requires, why do they always require the mystery goo when it's the least useful instrument that we could pack, basically. But anyway, we've got two contracts. We only have room for two contracts. We could upgrade mission control, though. Maybe we should. Uh, all right, I'm going to do that. We're going to upgrade mission control. We're going to get the other um, uh, moon contracts right now so that we don't lose them. I want all the moon. Aim at moon and miss. Aim wayfarer as a particular thing. Launch a wayfarer probe. Wow, that pays a lot. But it's got a lot of requirements. Prestige exceptional. We, we're sort of lacking in prestige, mind you. Perform a litho breaking maneuver. They pay a lot, though, <laughs> again. Uh, well, I said all the moon things. Well, let's do moon things. Shoot. But I want to try and... land on the moon first. I mean, we've got some time. This one doesn't expire at any time. So we can do that at our, at our leisure, and I don't know what a Burke probe or Wayfarer probe looks like right now. So we'll leave that be. Let's just try the landing, and then we'll, uh, if the landing seems a little bit hard, because we still have the 18 ton limit right now, if that seems a little bit hard, we can go ahead and aim at the moon and miss, maybe. So here's our delta, and optimizing this might be a little bit hard. Optimizing this for landing might be a little bit hard. This AMBA probe core might have enough. I mean, it doesn't have as much as Lofty, though. Lofty's pretty darn good. This is one of those Pioneer probes. Problem is, we don't have super small fuel tanks, do we? We've got some new fuel tanks, though. There's this upper stage kit, though. Does this, does this have a fuel tank? And what do you mean by kit? They have, it's got some mod propellant built in. No, it's still huge though. 
That's got Delta V. Well, it's four kilonewtons of mod propellant. I mean, at least we have infinite throttling around here. There's no bottom node? Oh, uh, at the bottom node, it's all the way in there. Because it's supposed to wrap around uh, SRB. Like, we need that in our lives. Uh, but I guess SRBs are the most efficient thing in the world around here. Bizarre as that is. So it's supposed to go with this Stara one. The Stara one isn't our most efficient SRB, though. It's only 266. This one's 283, though. And it's a different Stara one. And this one is a uh, Stara 17, and it's 289. Well, they're cheap to unlock, so we'll just unlock all of them. Let's see. This, uh... 289. So this is sort of like the surveyor probes, where they have vernier thrusters. And then also an SRB. Oh, the SRB doesn't do nothing. 288... Uh, 881 meters per second there. The uh, one with 283 doesn't really fit very well. <laughs> I mean, I hope it would separate properly, but boy. Uh, that's too much for an SRB right now, for our purposes, because that won't do just a single thing. That would have to do a whole bunch of stuff. This is the one that's supposed to fit in here, and it's still too... I mean, it could launch us to the moon and then some. We would need course plotting to make that work out for us. This contraption is good enough for the landing. Oh, this is a new very efficient engine. 311.9. We haven't gotten into the 300s in ISP yet. Okay, well that, that could change our launcher for good. They say if shut down, engine cannot restart. It says that uh, this is a cheaty SRB. It's got the ability to shut down in flight. That's, uh... That's cheats. I don't... I mean... The Star... It's based on the Star 37, but I don't remember the Star 37 being able to shut down like that. They usually have to do weird radial burns to make it happen. Okay, that's a cheaty SRB. They're all cheaty SRBs in this. I mean, I'm okay with 881. I can plan for that. Well, I can't really find a structural part that's going to help me out, so I'm just going to sort of take the decoupler and tweak scale this down. Not tweak scale. <laughs> tweak this down. So that's like that. And then we can put a decoupler here. And then put the stage here. And see if that works out. Now this has what kind of science? Telemetry reports photographs. I mean, I don't mind that. We can up the data capacity, but if we can transmit directly, we don't have to worry about that too much. I think telemetry report is fine for the landed situation initially. We'll just keep to that. Okay, and then so this has 10 mod propellant. It says that that 10 mod propellant provides 1,156 meters per second, which is pretty remarkable. That's interesting, but we could replace this engine now. We've got this Decker engine. Well, not that engine. The Decker engine is an upper stage engine, sorry. Uh, we can replace this engine now. The, the Agena engine. And we don't need this adapter piece anymore. That was useless. There was no fuel in it. It's just dry mass. Oh my! We've got this Isor one. That's a 422. This is a hydrogen one. Cryogenic. Well, you might want to lay off of that, but there's the Reliant engine. There's even this 300 vacuum ISP. Seeker liquid engine. Our problem is that we don't have tanks that are small enough. But this might be a good replacement for these guys. Four minute burn time. But fine thrust to weight ratio and plenty of delta V. That's a lot of delta V right there. I don't even know what to do with the SRB really. 
Well, I, I think we will try it out, but we want a better engine at the bottom here. This is Perseus engine. It's got a lot of... we could just uh, have less tankage mass, but... How bad could hydrogen and oxygen be, maybe? Hmm. Hold on. We'll need more volume, I think. We're not getting nearly as much, so we're going to need to increase diameter to 1.5 for the hydrolox if we go hydrolox. Well, it's nearly the kind of delta V we had before, but we're very light and we have more thrust to weight ratio. Now, if only I could put like MLI layers so that we wouldn't have tremendous boil off, that would be wonderful. Oh, I think we're going over the part count limit. No, height limit. Okay, long adapter tank, not a good idea. And for some reason, this thing's uh, shroud is way bigger than it needs to be. It's interesting. But it says LR87. Oh, this is the Hydrolox LR87. That's what it is. Okay, well, we don't need a shroud then. Okay, well, that's only 11 tons, and that should do the trick. I guess Epsilon. Epsilon? Oh, uh, it's a little bit weird. I don't even know. The probe core should be able to communicate from the moon, but it's tricky. This is cheap for a hydrogen rocket, or Hydrolox rocket. Let's see what the downsides are. Okay, so far so good. We don't have that leaf anymore. Our unofficial logo is temporarily gone. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm saying temporarily because it might pop up again. But it seems like Ad Astra might solve problems. We will see. So, we don't have any ability to plot anything. <laughs> uh, or even see when we have a moon encounter. And we're going to try to land on the moon. So, with that, throttle up, SAS on, and ignition, and launch. Well, I, they seem to have some spool up time. I should count for that a little bit better. Oh, water seems really... I mean, the sun is really bright, and it's sure tinting the water a lot. Those seem like regular islands, not ice flows. No, I think... No, no, those are the ice flows. They're still appearing. Yeah. Okay, we've still got ice flows. Well, I don't see any artifacts. I think it was the cloud shadows, by the way. Okay, separation and ignition. And check and ferry. Woo! Should make orbit easily with this engine, the Decker. I remember last time I played JNSQ, this Decker was a favorite as well. Skybox is really forceful. <laughs> uh, that is a forceful Skybox. In broad daylight, I don't think. Where's where's this uh, this object enhancement? That's waterfall. Dynamic sky dimming. What can I do? Does this probe have any extended antenna, I think? It doesn't seem to. How does it have its super range, anyway? Hopefully I didn't read that wrong. I mean, it's a Pioneer probe. It ought to be able to communicate from the moon. That's what they were designed to do, but... I don't know. Looking good, though. Now, now we're talking. And from here, the clouds look nice and fluffy. You know, I feel like I have so much delta V to waste right now. And we might need a heavier probe core, like the previous one we used. But I think I'll deorbit this stage. Okay, that should do that. Whoa, okay, that's, that's higher than I wanted it to be, but hopefully we have some, we've got 10 ignitions it says. All right, where is the moon? Can't target the moon, can't do anything like that. Just gonna eyeball it and hope that we have comms over the location where we can do the transfer.
Well, we have comms here. We should just go ahead and do the transfer right now. So, here we go for the moon. The sun flare is different, obviously, and I don't know, I, I think maybe I like the previous one better, but I'm not sure. And this is looking bad on the comms. I don't know. Still good on the sunlight. But, okay, let's see. Comms 22. It's right on the edge. Oh, okay. Well, we're bad on the approach. We have enough commas to correct it for now. And we certainly have enough delta V. Okay, I'm just gonna radial this in. I'm just gonna aim directly for the surface. <laughs> Gosh darn it, and the light daylight side there, facing the Earth. Uh, not Earth, Kerbin. Forgive me. Alright, I flipped the orbit the in uh, entire way around to make sure we're hitting the daylight side there. Okay. Just gonna go surface negative relative velocity and we're going to suicide this in basically. We should do telemetry data. Uh, well, we've sort of done telemetry right now, uh, around here, yeah. And I'm just gonna stop the photographs. We'll have the telemetry wait for new telemetry. But signal strength 16. I mean, it was gonna be close, but I didn't realize it was gonna be this close. And <laughs> it's like counting down to the surface, really. Might just barely make it. I don't have any information about suicide burn or, you know, time to periapsis or anything like that. Well, I think we might have like 1% signal strength by the time we get to the surface or something like that. So we're going to give this a go. We have 75 seconds worth of burn time on this stage. So we can wait for. The last min 15 seconds. Well, actually, uh, it depends on our speed. We're headed right in. So we're coming in at an unusually fast speed. Is it an impactor or is it a lander? Well, I'll start decelerating now. Oh, we've got plenty of time. But we have to ditch this stage anyway. We're not going to land on it. Wow, the take photographs would take 2,645 years. Hmm. Oh, our capacity is too low. What do we even have? I guess we got a lot of photographs. Uh, you know what? Uh, let's just uh, get rid of those. The reaction wheel on the probe is plenty good enough for this. It's really bright. I feel like the moon is too bright. It's like I'm landing on Elu or something. Okay, separation. Separation. Okay, my prof okay, okay, they're powerful, they're powerful. Uh, I mean, light level, okay, maybe that's better. But uh, it's still not as gray as I'm used to. Okay, now we have to avoid boulders too. Okay, looking good. And can't get better than that. All right. I don't know why it, it's actually somewhat in yellow. It's the the ground scatter is real serious. I guess we need more capacity for this kind of telemetry report. It can't transmit part of the data. I mean, can you just? Transmit that bit? I guess it can't. Well, we landed on the moon. We got that. A new Burke probe. I guess this is a Burke probe. <laughs> well, we don't have those experiments on. I don't know why it's a Burke probe. Well, it also seems to be check marked as a Wayfarer probe. I don't know why. 
But we were supposed to transmit or recover signs from the surface of the moon, and we can't. I should have upgraded it, like people said. Okay, well we only got the land on the moon bit done. But we get to test out the SRB. So... I'm gonna shut this down. Oh, we'll, we'll keep it running, I suppose. We can have it uh, partial thrust. Okay, we're gonna try to get back to orbit. Well, we still have some comms or something. This is the interesting part. Okay. A little bit of thrust, and... Go! Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot! <laughs> uh, a little bit high. Oh, see, now that's how you get into orbit around the moon. <laughs> Alright, in, in principle, I mean, uh, we should just have slapped some... So much uh Parachutes on here. But, yeah, we barely have enough signal strength. I hope this is... The moon is circular, right? So, I guess we would it would always work out, but just barely. I think we should get that satellite done after this. But this merits more exploration, this system. Okay, getting back to Kerbin. Actually, our orbit is ideal. Our periapsis is in the right place. First break orbit from the moon. And we have 482. We'll see. We have to exit first and then see what our orbit around Kerbin looks like and bring our periapsis down. Okay, okay, we can see our Kerbin orbit now. Retrograde. Now, of course, we can't survive this in theory. We could always check, but... But the point is we had enough, perhaps with enough margin for a parachute. And maybe a heat shield. Okay, here goes nothing. How much heat tolerance do you suppose this thing has, this upper stage kit? I mean, it looks pretty robust. Uh-oh. Okay, uh, 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 alright, alright. Yeah, we'll be needing a heat shield. Okay, but let's try and get that satellite with a goo container. I mean, uh, uh, technically we could have that return from the moon though, right? We have a contract for get into orbit around the moon and return. Se technically the thing that landed on the moon does not have to be the thing that returns from orbit around the moon. These are two separate things. Right, with the explorer moon, we've already completed land on the moon. We just need to return to Kerbin from orbit of the moon. So we can combine that with that satellite that we have, which is in this orbit, and has a mystery goo, so we can bring the mystery goo back. And I think our existing rocket can handle that. Okay, well, here we have a nice little recovery system. I found out there was a special heat shield for the Hermes capsule. I don't know if that's enough ablator or not, but then again, if the all the ablator melts away immediately anyway, it hardly matters. But yeah, we've got this, but we don't have any parachutes here yet. And so taking a look, um, obviously we have the Mark 16 parachute, but there's no node to put that on if we have the probe core there. We could probably put it on top without the probe core there, but uh, we are lacking little cubic octagonal struts or anything that can easily add stuff to this. I really miss really attaching everything, but anyway, there's this derp radio parachute, but and this looks great, right? I mean, you take a look at that, attach it, but uh-oh, look here. Width and length have gone up past 15 meters. Take this off, 1.3. Put these on, apparently it's reading their inflated width and length. So, we can't use those. And then I unlocked the Hermes main parachute, but it doesn't surface attach, even though it looks exactly like the radial parachute there. Uh, it needs the Hermes capsule recovery section. And, well, that's fine. That's why I actually made sure that this was the core part, because we will put the 
recovery section, that's why I typed in Hermes there. And we will try to use that parachute. Because, well, first of all, we need the goo containers anyway, so... So, we'll put this in here. And we have the recovery parachute. We have a little node for our probe core. And we probably have some space for some goo as well. Science. Ooh. Some other stuff. Ooh, the goo is pretty big though. I want two goo for balance. I guess we can put them like this. I think the heat shield covers them, right? And that's still much less mass than the Hermes capsule, so the parachute should be able to do the work. Okay, so then we have that. And we're gonna omit the whole business that we had with the lander. And just have this stage here. So that ends up with 2,300 meters per second like that. It's a little bit overburdened. You know, maybe we don't need this little structural adapter after all. We do want to up the data capacity here. We'll take two megabytes there. I mean, that should be enough to transfer the moon to the moon capture. And but in the particular orbit that we're going into, it's a little bit troublesome. Maybe it's time to add some boosters to this rocket, too. Well, we can't add any more fuel inline because that'll make us too tall. Unless we widen the whole thing, which I don't know, maybe we should do, but... I think we just want boosters. And now we have a medium radial decoupler there. Well, these solid rocket boosters are too heavy. Oh, wait, the Al Gol version is not... Not very long burning, but then again, our stage here has plenty of thrust weight ratio. It's probably not the most optimized rocket right now. And I might be being overly ambitious with this. We'll see. I think we've got everything though. All right, here we go. SAS on, throttle up. And actually, we don't need all the throttle. I just want to light it a little bit so that we have extra control, but uh, we mainly need the boosters for the initial thrust weight ratio, and then we can get up to where this thing can provide more ISP. So, ignition, and launch. Yeah, definitely don't need high throttle yet. Okay. Following up, and separation. Thankfully, I had tuned the boil off lower, so it's it's not too bad right now. Seems like it's not hurting at all, really. Okay, separation and ignition. And checking fairings. All right. No, we haven't done telemetry here. Okay, it's very slowly transmitting that. I don't know about the, these cloud patterns. They look like fjords or something. Interesting clouds. Well, we will try to have this help us out on the transfer this time. A little bit high, but... Alright, let's just go with it. Minmus awaits too. It's a whole other thing. This time was pretty good. Got that telemetry report. We should start now. We've got a ground station and also a probe up above. Okay, and go. And separation and ignition. I have to watch out for this one. We've only got 10 ignitions there. And we uh, need to get into a very particular orbit around the moon. 
Well, we need to hang out a little bit. This is a little bit later than the other pass. Okay, we are recharging though. I think that's probably the best angle though, because we have them on the sides, not on the top this time. All right, all right. Um, we need to go the other way around. Well, this is the time to fix that. And maybe a little bit further south. I don't know if it's worthwhile capturing low first or capturing high. I think we'll just go low first and then boost up. Out of the way, comms should be fine. So we're looking for an apoapsis of 1,955. And ignition. Oh, that's probably a little bit low. But they have, you know, interesting tolerances sometimes. Zero degree inclination. Do we get to see our inclination? No, I don't think we get to see our inclination yet, right? Yeah, that's all locked still. Okay, well, um, we need to fix that. <laughs> uh, so maybe out here we should tilt a bit at this ascending node. It says 10 degrees, so we do see that. Okay, so we want to go south. I think that's close enough. Okay. We are recharging out to Apoapsis. All right, let us get into this wacky orbit up here. Okay, it is happy. We just need to maintain stability. And we've done that. Okay, now transmit and recover scientific data. We want to return to Kerbin from Orbit of the Moon with the goo. Let's see about the goo. 10 minutes. We will point at the sun. I don't think we get enough electric charge out of this. Hold on, let's rotate here. Well, we'll see what we can do. Can we last the 10 minutes here? Okay, we got that. Don't need to wait. And I think we are going to bring our orbit down and get the low orbit stuff too. We've got 1,300 meters per second. So over here, we'll bring the orbit down. And then we can get the low orbit and then escape on that side. We just need to be below 200. Okay, we've got a line back. Let's start it out. Depleted, that's the depleted one. Okay. Can't start a... S wait, what? So that one's depleted. Fine. This one, it says, Can't start Mystery Goo observation a second time on Vessel Epsilon 2. But we've got two! We've got two. Why? No. You mean there's no point in packing two of them? How dare you mess with my mystery goo? Well, take photographs. Well, we filled it. Oh, that's why it's 2,600 years, because there's just no more space for it. Okay, and now we have to bring that periapsis down. There's only because we can't plot things or see the next patched conic. Well, this return will inform our ability to return Kerbals later. So I'm not going to try and slow down. We could slow down extra, right? We've got 800 meters per second left. Deploy goo experiment. It's got its own goo experiment? It's got its own goo experiment. Because we can't... We didn't even have to have those things. It has its own GUI experiment. We have three GUI experiments on here. I didn't even realize that thing had a GUI. Why would a recovery module have a GUI experiment? Okay, well, we still have comms here. Parachute. Get the, to the right pressure. Deploy. Something like that. Okay. Hopefully that's okay. That's the decoupler we want. Separation. 
And we have a reaction wheel here still. I mean, the Hermes spot is obviously the Mercury capsule, but... And that means it's not rated for return from the moon, necessarily. So there is that to worry about. Well, on the bright side, the uh, ablation seems to be much more reasonable here. On a return from the moon. <laughs> I mean, the seat shield is good, maybe. We should use this more often. All right, well, yeah, the heat shield did the trick with plenty of ablator to spare in this case. Now it is lighter than a capsule, but still. Okay, well, sort of a lopsided parachute situation here. Okay, and we're down. All right, well, recover. Uh, well, I mean, we got a whole bunch of little credits. Um, Oh, we did get the mystery goo observation moon space high. Is it okay with that? Uh, let's see. Science day from space around the moon. Okay, we got that done as well. Uh, so yeah, we got everything done that we were supposed to get done with that one. We've got these two peculiar ones from Blue Dog and then science day directly from the surface of the moon we need to get back. Um, I think next time we should do something with Kerbals, with crew. Uh, so we'll see about- oh, there's, there's an Explore Minmus though. Maybe we should send a Kerbal to Minmus. We will think about that. So anyway, uh, that does it for me this time. We've got plenty of science, and we'll see how to deploy it in the next video. And we've got some funds with which we could potentially upgrade a tracking station or the launch pad, which, <laughs> you know, we've been putting that off unnecessarily for quite a while now. Anyway, so with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.